everyone. Welcome to another session of Mommy Teo Teaches Math. Our most essential learning competency for today is graphing circular functions. We will be identifying the amplitude, the period, and the phase shift. Let's do it. Amplitude of bounded periodic function is half the difference of the highest value and the lowest value. So when we say amplitude, we'll just get the difference of the highest point and the lowest point and divide it by 2. That's the amplitude. Now, what is this periodic function? When we say periodic function, the graph of the function keeps repeating its cycle. So, I will be illustrating that later. Now, what is this period? Period is the graph's complete cycle. Okay. For y equals a sine of quantity b theta plus c plus d and y equals a cosine of b theta plus c plus d, the amplitude will be equal to the absolute value of a. The period is 2 pi over b. The vertical shift is d. If D is negative, you have to go down. If B is positive, you have to go up. The horizontal shift is equal to negative C over, of course, D. If it is negative, you have to go to the left. If it is positive, you have to go to the right. Now, example one, let us graph Y is equal to sine theta. As I have said, this one is your Y and this one is your X, which means your theta. This one is the circular function. I have written here all the special, special angles from 30 to, of course, 360 degrees. And these are the corresponding values. We have 0 and then 1 half, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 3 over 2, and then positive 1. This one is positive 1. Okay. So we have here also negative 1 half. Negative square root of 2 over 2, negative square root of 3 over 2, and negative 1. By the way, square root of 2 over 2 is 0.7 approximately, and square root of 3 over 2 is approximately 0.87. So meaning, square root of 2 over 2 is less than square root of 3 over 2. Let's do it. So, we know already the different va values of this circular functions. Of course, starting from 0. Sign. We will be graphing, of course, the sign here. So, our sign 0 is 0. Our sign 30 is, of course, 1 half. It's here. Our sign 45 is the square root of 2 over 2. We have already solved these values of a special angles. And then, our sign 30 is... Our sine 60, rather, is the square root of 3 over 2. It's here. And our 90 degree angle is equal to 1. So, this one. Okay. So, it keeps repeating the cycle. So, this is square root of 3 over 2. This is square root of 2 over 2. Okay. And then 150 is, of course, 1 half. And then 180 is 0. Okay. So, and then we have 210, this is negative 1 half, and then negative square root of 2 over 2, it's here, and then we have square root of 2 over 2, square root of 3 over 2, negative, and then here we have, of course, negative 1. And then it follows the cycle, it's here, and then this one. And then this one, and then this. Okay. So this one is the graph, one complete cycle of, of course, the sine function. So this is y is equal to sine of theta. Now, let us identify the amplitude. The amplitude is, of course, the a. So y is equal to... A, we will be writing it that way. A, that is 1. That is 1 sine of, this is 1 theta plus 0 plus 0. So, this is sine theta plus 0 is 0. So, this is y equals 1 sine of theta. So, therefore, our A is equal to 1. Our B is equal to 1. 
our c is equal to 0 and our d is equal to 0, of course. Now, for the amplitude, amplitude is the absolute value of 1. Or, if you have the maximum point, that will be y is equal to, sorry, this one is a rather, a, the amplitude, is equal to 1, and the lowest, the maximum is positive 1, and the lowest is, the minimum is negative 1. So, my 1 minus negative 1 over 2, so this is A is equal to 2 over 2, which is equal to 1. So, therefore, this one is always positive because it's absolute value. Now, for the period, the period will be, it says here, one complete cycle. The period will be equal to, of course, 2 pi over b. And your b is, of course, 1. So, this one is 2 pi. Okay, this one is the period. So, this one is one complete cycle. Now, if you will be getting, again, of course, uh, 390 degrees and so on and so forth, it keeps on repeating the cycle. Now, for the vertical shift, the vertical shift will be, of course, 0. D is 0. And, of course, the horizontal shift will be 0 also. Okay, before graphing number 2 and number 4, we will be doing first number 3. So, we have y equals 3 sine of 2 theta minus 1. So, I will be expressing it first in this form. So, y is equal to 3 sine of 2 theta minus 1, I minus 0, minus 1. So, 2 theta minus 0 is 2 theta, and then that is minus 1. So, our A here is 3, B is 2, C is 0, and D is equal to negative 1. So, our vertical shift is negative 1, vertical shift is negative 1, and our horizontal shift is, of course, negative C. That is 0 over 2. That is 0. So, our period here, our period 1 complete cycle will be equal to 2 pi over, of course, B. So, that is 2. So, therefore, our 1 complete cycle will be pi. Okay. Now, how are we going to graph it? So, we will move down 1 from here because of its, of course, vertical shift. So, the, our amplitude is, of course, 3. So, 1, 2, 3. That's the highest point. And then, this one is the lowest point. 1, 2, 3 also. That's it. So, if I will be graphing it, this one is, of course, the graph. Okay. I did not find any more. This one is the graph. I did not find any more the special angles. I just look for, of course, this four angles. One, the zero, the 45, the 90, the 135, and of course, 180. Because I know that the period is only pi, and that is 180. This time, I will be graphing y equals cosine of theta. So, still... Our amplitude is equal to the absolute value of A, which is, of course, this one is cosine of theta. Our A is 1. So, our amplitude is, of course, 1. So, our period is equal to 2 pi over B. Our B here is, of course, 1 also. So, our A is 1. Our B is 1. Our C is 0. Our D is 0. So, this one is 1. So, our period, therefore, is 2 pi. Okay. That is one complete cycle. Our vertical shift is 0 and our horizontal shift is also 0. Let's do it. Let's graph it. So, we have here cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is, of course, 1. It's here. Okay. Cosine of 30 degrees, cosine of 30 degrees is, of course, the square root of 3 over 2, it's here. And then, 45, we have square root of 2 over 2. And then, we have 1 half. And then, we have, of course, 0. 
And then for 120, we have 1 half. And then negative square root of 2 over 2. And then square root of 3 over 2. And then negative 1. So it follows the cycle again. It goes this way. Okay. So this is for this. This one is for this. This one is for this. And then this one, where is am I now? So that is cosine of, okay, here. Sorry for this. So we have uh, this one, okay. Okay, so next is, of course, 300 degrees. Where is 300 degrees cosine? Cosine of 300 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. No, cosine of 300, 1 half. It's 1 half. And then square root of 2 over 2. And then square root of 3 over 2. And then 1. Okay, so this one is the complete cycle. That is the graph of the cosine function. This is the cosine function. Okay, example number four. Y equals negative five cosine of two theta plus five. So our A is negative five. Our B is two. Our C is five. And our D is zero. Okay, so our amplitude is equivalent to the absolute value of five. So that is equal to 5. And our horizontal shift, our horizontal shift is negative 5, negative C, negative 5 over, of course, B, which is 2. So this one is our horizontal shift. And then our period is equal to 2 pi over, of course, B, which is 2. So, our period is equal to 5. So, one complete cycle will be equal. We know that the horizontal shift is negative pi over 2. We need to say these are positive theta and these are negative theta. So, therefore, we will be having two more angles. I have chosen negative 45 and negative 90 because of this horizontal shift. So, we will be moving pi over 2 here on the left side so our period is of course pi we know what pi is that is equivalent to 180 this one is equivalent actually to 180 so how are we going to graph it we know already that the graph of the cosine looks like this okay looks like that so how are we going to graph it to graph it is still we will be having this, but this time, it will be moving like this. It is because, as I have said, this one is one complete cycle. So, this is negative 5 for 90. And then, this one is, of course, 0. And then, the highest, positive 5, since the amplitude is 5, of course. And then, this one is 0. And this one is negative 5. So, this one is negative 5, sorry. Okay. I have to move it here. So this one is negative 5, approximately negative 5. This one is 90. This one is 90. So this is the graph. Okay. For the four remaining functions, I will not be graphing anymore the tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. But you know already the values of tangent 0, 30, 60, and so on and so forth. Same with cotangent, secant, and cosecant. All you have to do is to plot it. Remember that this is the y-axis. And this one is the horizontal axis, which contains, of course, your theta, the, the special angles. Okay. But I will give you tips on how to sketch it. First, you have to identify the period P of the function. Take note, period. 
that is one complete cycle and then to determine circular function value for five special angles so five special angles will be enough draw vertical asymptotes on the values where the function is undefined so you have to draw a vertical asymptote remember that vertical asymptote is a vertical line in which the graph moves closer and closer but never touches it Number four, plot the points and use them together with the vertical asymptotes as guide to sketch the cycle of the graph.